Hey y'all, this is Billy, the permaculture pimp daddy of Permapastures Farm. A while back, I showed you how to do some off-grid fencing, at least as it pertains to your electrical fence. And this was kind of the rig I showed you. Today, we're gonna do a little something different. On the roof, I had this little number here. It's a solar panel, and I think it might be seven watts, maybe eight, somewhere thereabout. Well, I knew it wasn't gonna last, and be for a couple of reasons, because I know there are a bunch of people out there that are looking to do this sort of thing, and when it comes, you know, you may try your hand at carpentry, you may try some plumbing, you may do that. But most people are worried about getting Kentucky Fried when it comes to doing electric work. And I understand that. So I'm not going to give you anything that's going to put you in any kind of danger. So with that said, folks, I'm going to talk about what we need to do to retrofit. Now, this battery under this chart or this solar panel has lasted roughly, we'll say a month and a half. Actually, it would have gotten two months out of it. But on this little indicator on my regulator, it told me that it was getting low. When that happens, you usually got another seven days, at least from my experience. Okay, so that happened. So I realized that this ain't keeping up with the output on this. I'm not going to give you any technical language. We're not going to talk about Ohm's Law. We're not going to do any of that. I'm going to show you some easy remediation to things like this if you're doing it at home. Right off the bat, I know that ultimately I'm probably going to need to keep up with everything and then also the other loads that I'm going to put onto this as the year progresses, I know that I need more wattage. In other words, more solar panel. So this one ain't cutting it, but I don't have to throw it away. I don't have to get rid of it. They make components to where you can take this solar panel and combine it with the one I'm about to show you here in a moment. And you can take them all as long as it doesn't exceed 100 watts. That's what this solar regulator is made for, right? As long as the totality of my panels doesn't exceed 100 watts, I can keep using this thing. Now, in the future, this is not going to be sufficient, but this is pretty cool for me to not only test it out and maybe help out some folks out there that are thinking about doing this, but I also know that in time, I'm going to have to up my um, capacity. I don't have to worry about it right now. I know that to charge this bad boy, I need 50, maybe up to 100 watts, depending on the load. But that's future videos. So for right now, let me go out here and we're going to show you what we have and how we're going to retrofit this. All right, so here's our remedy to this problem. And it may not be the full remedy. This is just explaining that if you don't have the money right off or maybe you got to do it in increments, it's easy to do. And this is one of the components that helps. This sucker here can basically tie in, I don't know, what is it, maybe seven or eight. Every little port here, I'll take it out of here. It's a basically ties your solar panels together. That's all it does. So, and this will ultimately go into my um, controller. So all I'm gonna do is basically mount this along with this. I could just mount this and just see how it goes. And I may just do that um, because I don't have enough plywood. So this will connect in to here. This will connect into here. And then this will connect back to my regulator. And it's just like that, folks. So let's say you don't have enough, or maybe you can afford just one panel at the time. Okay, that's cool. Do it with the expectation that when you get more money, you can add more to it. It's really that simple. You don't have to be, you don't have to be some uh, professional to get this stuff exactly the way you need it to make it work. Now, when you're mixing components and stuff like that, leave it to somebody like me or any other journeyman electrician that might be able to handle that for you. But when it comes to this plug and play stuff, folks, it's made for anybody. So with that said, I'm gonna go ahead and get this mounted to a piece of plywood. The plywood is gonna, because the greenhouse is generally situated with way the sun tracks east to west on this side of the, um, on this side of the greenhouse. So setting it directly up there and attaching it to the base is not gonna be a problem. We'll get that done and then we'll go ahead and connect the rest of it. Okay, so I got the two solar panels out there right now. Now, the 25 watt, the one that's most consequential, 
it's actually at the right angle that it should be for the sun. Well, as it as luck would have it, my plywood isn't long enough to put them both on there. So for now, I'm just got the other one vertical. I mean, it's not perfect. It should be at the angle of the sun as best you can, but it's something I can go back and fix later. The more important thing is, is that it's up there right now and it may not be doing its full capacity, but it's doing enough. And that's, a, and that's really enough right now. Now, here's our next thing. We got both of them coming down. The thicker one is the 25 watt. The other one's like the seven or eight watt, whatever that is. And then here is the little device that you can buy. And I think this thing was about 10 bucks. So really it's this simple. All the way around this thing, you have ports where you can take the male and female end. It's got a little bit of both on there. You take it and you plug it in to this. You can't mess it up. It really, it only has one way you can plug it in. Plug one in here, plug one in here. And then we got to figure out how we want to mount this thing. And then out of here, it even says it on there. It even says output, okay? And then on here, on your regulator, it says solar. So ordinarily, if you just had one, a single solar panel, this thing would marry up with the factory provided thing that they already have here. Bam, plug it in, you're ready to rock and roll. But we got this thing here. So where if you have multiple panels, this thing will bring them all into one. I won't go into any detail about that. But we come out of the output and it marries up with this. Now the problem is, is that they make a little kit. It's like an accessory kit on the same shelf with everything else they have here. You know, really they ought to be paying me royalties for this. Problem is, is that it should have a connector on the other end. It doesn't have it. But no problem, because I have this other one from a previous kit. I'm going to cut this off because they have these little ferrules on the end of them and they don't work very well when you have wire nuts. I'm going to cut it off, expose the copper, wire nut it together, and then just tie it right into my system here. So with that said, I'll go ahead and get that done. All right, so we got it all. I know it looks like snakes in heat right now, and that's normal because I'm gonna, I got to dress it up. Okay, let me just kind of give a brief synopsis of what we got going on here. This is basically, I won't go into any technical jargon or anything like that. This here is where you plug all your solar panels. And in this particular one, I can have up to 400 watts. Okay, that's quite a bit, um, especially for the applications I have here. And then here it even writes on there, it's output. And that is the one going down to your solar charge regulator. I know this is going to be a little tough to explain, but basically all of your stuff in it's really not that tough to explain. Just know that this little hub here, which is exactly what it is, takes all of your solar panels and brings them into one. And then on the output, it comes down and it even tells you where to go into your solar charge regulator. Now folks, I will say in this particular case, this is where it's not all plug and play in this particular, in my particular case, because the polarity matters. Yeah, polarity matters meaning positive needs to go to positive and negative to negative. But in this case, I had to switch positive and negative around because of the nature of their plug and play connectors. Now that's not something I'm gonna go through any kind of detail in explaining how it goes because it's a little more advanced. It's, it's not, but I don't, I don't wanna take any chance of anybody going out there buying stuff and then messing it up. Look, long and short of it is in this, in this little contraption you see right here, is I can plug, right now I have the equivalent of maybe, I don't know, let's say somewhere around 30 watts, which is not going to be sufficient enough to charge this battery indefinitely, which is what I'm going to need. But the cool thing about it is, as I get the money, as I get the time, as I get whatever I need, I can just add another one to it, bam, plug it in here, plug it in here, plug it in here, because I'm going to need somewhere in the neighborhood of about 100 watts when it's all said and done, because right now this battery is doing nothing more than charging those two fences. Well, in the future, it's gonna be having other loads on it as well. One of them being the lights in this place. Another one being another thing I don't wanna talk about just yet. Um, and there's a reason for that. There's a reason I'm waiting on that. Long story short, folks, it's really not that difficult. But when you buy a certain manufacturer, you're kind of stuck with sticking with them because all the things they make are typically plug and play for that particular manufacturer. So folks, we went basically from seven or eight watts, whatever that little rinky-dink thing was, to now going near 30. And all it really required was buying this hub and plugging it in to the latest solar, to the solar panel. 
So folks, that's it in a nutshell. There's really not much to this. I'm, like I said, I know this looks a little confusing right now, but I got, I'm running out of daylight and I got to wrap this video up. You get the point. I hope it's useful, folks. So next time, until next time, this is Billy, the Permaculture Pimp Daddy, where pimp stands for permaculture, is my passion. Ain't that right, milk boy?